development. Welcome back, dear viewers, and uh, still with our coverage uh, of uh, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi's current visit to Paris. And we're joined over the phone with uh, Mr. Ali Mansi, strategic and economic expert. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Well, uh, sir, uh, President Sisi attends an African Economic Financing Summit. How important is this summit in boosting the economic development in Africa? Well, uh, first, let me start by thanking you for having me with you. And I would like to mention that uh, actually I had the privilege of joining your esteemed channel on more than one occasion during 2020, within which I highly emphasized the rising importance of Africa to the global economy and uh, the potential uh, economic gains that would be unleashed from the higher inclusion of the African nations and the sources into the global economic system. Proceeding from that, I believe that Egypt has uh, the prerogative of stepping the scene with uh, all the reforms that have taken place last few years with financial banking, uh, sectors, exchange rates, regime, public financial management, etc. And um, let me mention a few facts that uh, uh, as per the 2018 Africa shares uh, and as per the World Bank actually, Africa shares of global trade uh, has been around 2%. Uh, maybe this, uh, uh, this number is not very recent, but I believe it's within the same bracket. And uh, extra 1% actually, uh, uh, each extra 1% uh, increase in, uh, in Africa share of global trade uh, anticipates a 70 billion annual, uh, 70 billion dollars uh, increase in annual income. So I believe uh, what's going on in uh, in Paris uh, summit uh, right now or about to uh, to go on is really important and uh, it's it's very intuitive uh, that uh, that it has to take place. Uh, proceeding from that, this Paris summit uh, currently uh, taking place, it's aiming for the, the economic revival of Africa seems to be highly interested, as I've mentioned, especially after uh, that uh, the, the first recession within during the, 25, the last 25 years in terms of real GDP uh, in Africa, uh, Africa is facing now. And actually, it's, uh, it's temporary, and it's not expected to last for long. Uh, it's anticipated that during uh, 2000, uh, 2022, uh, the real GDP would, uh, would start increasing again, maybe not at the same pace, but yet it will, it will, head, it will hit the green area. Yet certain measures have to take place in order to capture the highest possible economic value during this comeback from the recession. And it would be intuitively uh, compatible with the, I believe it would be compatible with the 2030 sustainable development goals of the SDGs uh, previously set. Uh, uh, as per this Ababa action agenda in 2015 and later on in uh, the G20 at uh, Buenos Aires Summit, uh, I expect the summit in Paris uh, uh, would integrate the SDGs with, uh, with its main objectives of uh, poverty and uh, income inequality uh, combat, uh, aiming to the summit survival of the current societies in terms and places uh, they always mention that impact investment and uh, billions to billions of the prior uh, so on, through putting in place the financial resources uh, capable of advancing the, the economy of the country, especially that the IMF has dedicated uh, recently $660 billion uh, for, the, for global development, for global economic development. I want to mention here that less, less than 10%, maybe only 8% of those $650 billion are dedicated to Africa, uh, $34 billion to African nations and $24 to uh, Sub-Saharan uh, uh, Sub African uh, tribes, which is very, very little, apparently, and it indicates that there is still uncertainty uh, from the point of view in uh, invest, investment uh, in Africa. And this uh, would arise uh, further challenges uh, for us to, uh, to face, uh, to overcome, in order to um, uh, to pave the way for further investment. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's a de facto that uh, public uh, investment, uh, governmental investment alone is not enough to achieve the economic development we would like to. Uh, therefore, private investment is very important, very important to unlock private investment 
and uh, uh, and pave the way for, the, for this type of investments, whether they are in the form of uh, mutual funds, head funds, sovereign funds, uh, FDIs, private equity platforms, or even in the form of um, venture capitalists or the business incubators. And in order to do that, 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 that we have to understand that investors, especially private investments, is very important. And uh, 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 and private investors, they do care about uh, risk. Uh, that's the main that's the main point. That's that's the main objective that they have to um, to cover uh, the risk. And it's obvious that Africa is uh, still a high high risky uh, business environment for them, and it's very important to provide the tools uh, to cover or, um, or hedge those uh, risks, whether those tools are in the form of political stability, exchange rate uh, stability, uh, predictable interest rates, uh, uh, public, uh, finan uh, uh, good public financial management, healthy public financial management in, in different aspects. All this will uh, will will uh, will pave the way for private investments to crowd in, and it's very important for those private investors to crowd in in order to achieve the economic development we would like to in Africa during the next decade or two decades. Well, uh, sir, to what extent uh, could the outcome of this summit help in overcoming the repercussions of COVID-19? Uh, actually, uh, COVID-19 is, um, is a cyclical recession that uh, um, the, the economy has to pay. So COVID-19 has only been a reason for this cyclical recession. If it has not been for the COVID-19, it has been for any other reason. But it's very important to tackle uh, the issue of the city. And I believe that this summit is, uh, uh, is one step forward towards highlighting the importance of uh, as uh, Africa as a, as a continent, uh, especially that um, uh, highlighting this importance would uh, uh, would let the eye to overcoming many other uh, problems facing facing Africa. It's important to mention that uh, that um, inequality in Africa is very high. Uh, for instance, another indicator that uh, corruption perception index uh, published by. Uh, the billion based transparency international, uh, it's, uh, the, the lowest grade, the lowest grade of banking as an African nation. This corruption, this corruption uh, alone is uh, sufficient to slow down any investment and economic development uh, going on in Africa. So this summit is very important, uh, especially that, uh, I mean, as I mentioned earlier, the IMF and other uh, global uh, institutions and, uh, and universal banks uh, are, are highly looking for Africa for, uh, for, for, for the arena of uh, the next uh, decade uh, for the investments and uh, how important Africa is uh, to, the, to the global economic ecosystem, especially that uh, for instance, uh, um, certain concepts like, like global value chain, uh, which, um, which has the, the, its, its participation or its share in the GDP uh, globally has declined during the last 20 years. And now it has, uh, it, 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 it has a wide importance to, uh, to refocus on those global value chains and, and what they can contribute. To, uh, to the growth of the uh, GDP and uh, building a synergy within Africa would, um, uh, what, what would facilitate uh, what, what would facilitate the, the different actions taken to uh, to this economic development. So I believe this kind of summit is uh, is one step forward towards achieving uh, the goals of 2030, as mentioned earlier. Right. Well, I would like to thank you very much, Mr. Ali Mansi, strategic and economic expert. Many thanks for your insights, sir. And dear viewers, now we go to a short break, and we'll be right back to continue our coverage of President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi's current visit to France. Egypt opens up to the world.
President Abdel Fattah Sisi meets with world leaders.